Hey guys, today's topic of the video is going to be about Helen Sixo's essay, The Love of the Medusa. So in this video, I will be covering the whole ideas of uh, Helen Sixo and the most dominant ideas in her essay, The Love of the Medusa. But before starting, I will suggest you to watch the videos given in the description box under the heading of the uh, of recommended re readings and recommended watch so that you can get the idea what the video is going to discuss what are the core ideas of Helen Sixo and Lewis Arigre so the next video will be coming on Lewis Arigre so uh, Helen Sixo and uh, Lewis Arigre so more more focusing on Helen Sixo she was the, one of the pioneers or the one of the mothers of French feminism. She comes under the title of post-structuralist feminine theory, feminist literary theory, and her ideas are influenced by Jacques Derrida's deconstruction and Sigmund Freud and Jacques Lacan. So he, she basically uses Jacques Lacan and Sigmund Freud's ideas and deconstruct them by using the theory, the philosophy of Jacques Derrida. I have made a video on Jacques Derrida's deconstruction and the idea of center. You should watch that before starting this video. So uh, she was also a critic, a philosopher and a playwright and essayist and so forth. And she is, uh, you know, still alive. I'm making this video in 2023 and she is still alive. So her famous work, which I will be di discussing in this video, is The Love of the Medusa. So starting properly, so Helene Sixo, uh, she starts from where Jacques Lacan and his theory. So I have made a video on the symbolic of the Jacques Lacan. You should watch that if you want a total understanding of this topic. So, Jacques Lacan says that men and women enter into the symbolic world or this world which has cultures and society which are, which are ruled by patriarchy or people or men who have penis. Uh, is, uh, so, um, so, so, they enter into a symbolic world in different ways through different doors and positions of both sexes are different so the position of both sexes are different in the symbolic order so in this world the position of both sexes of men and women are different like when Jacques Lacan says that men ladies and gentlemen there are two doors uh, from which women from the door of la ladies women and girls enter to the to this world whereas from the door denoting the gentle gentlemen we see boys entering to this uh, to this uh, world to, to to this symbolic order so there are different things which we tell a girl to do and which we tell our boys to do and there is a and there is a gap between the those both genders we we encourage boys to do something and we repress girls from doing something so that that's the gap Helene Kixos is talking about so uh, Helene Kixos says that Lacan mentions the center of the symbolic order and the phallic system as a as a phallogocentric system or patriarchal system so Helene Sixu she concludes that that the that the that, that Lacan's idea of this symbolic order or this world is more patriarchal. Uh, Helene Sixou is going to deconstruct this idea uh, using Derrida's deconstruction in this in her essay, The Love of the Medusa. So moving towards next slide. So let's understand what phallogocentric uh, phallogocentric system is. So, phallogocentric system, let's break this word. Phallogocentric, phallogo means phallus, the logic based on phallus or penis, all right? And centric means centered. So, a centered made up of a center or a system 
which is centered which is which 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 uh, which comes around which is centered around phallus or penis and this concept describes lacan notion about structure of language all right so remember that logocentric term from jacques derrida that uh, when women when when he thinks that the western thought and culture is centered around rationality logic and rationality and logic were madness and speech is superior to writing so rationality is superior to madness and speech is superior to writing similarly men are superior to women so there is a by so you should watch that video on the binary opposition so that you can all get the idea of that how a thing a word on the left side of slash is prioritized is is uh, and while the other word on the right side of the slash is degraded is not is is looked inferior so moving towards the next slide what does kixos does then so she what she do she combines the two term logocentric and phallocentric so to describe western culture as a phallocentric based on the priority on the left term and over the right term in a binary opposition so fellow so logocentric means the cent the importance of logic and phallocentric means the importance of penis or importance of males so in both center you have think that rationality and men are hold superior to 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 madness or irrationality and and women so the madness and women are thought to be inferior and men and logic are thought to be superior so so the right side term is valued or the given and is given importance but the right side term is viewed at other or undesirable there is a concept of self and other self is what self is what is thought to be um, loved and it is very near to you and and other is a thing which you feel that it is other let it go it is undesirable it is inferior so all the western history all the his western history of philosophy you have you have thought you, you have been taught that rationality is superior to madness why madness is not that good thing why derrida and helen kixo they both are questioning the same thing and why white is superior to black why men are superior to women so that's the idea of all feminism so moving towards the next slide so helen kixo follows lacan's theory that child must be se separated from mother's body which is the real and because the baby has to enter into the symbolic order so in the in the real of uh, jacques lacan i i will i will i will provide you the link where lacan's idea of real is told so you should watch that video where the uh, to enter a baby in child uh, into this world into this culture a baby is separated from mother so that the baby uh, the uh, and that and that the baby's attachment with, with, with mother is real and there was no language all right so there was no rule and anything so to teach the baby culture the baby is separated first from mother's breast and then they the culture taught the baby that these are the rules of the father you should learn them otherwise your penis will be cut according to sigmund freud so because of this female body becomes something which is not represented in language and becomes what is not spoken and written in a phallocentric symbolic order so in the real there was no language all right so there was no language uh, when uh, when a child was in the real stage of jacques lacan so when it is separated from mother a kind of leg or a kind of 
a kind of you know uh, absence is created and now baby will lose its language to to get attached to to feel to or to to feel love and affection i have made that video previously in jakla call so note that kicks take maternal body a representation of all the female bodies female body is for female sexuality saying that female body and female uh, joint sense which is female sexuality is unrepresentable in the phallocentric patriarchal symbolic order because there was no language in the real so there were there were no rule by any men in the real so the um, so there was no language in the real so the la- the, the feel the baby what the what what happiness a child feels when when it is attached with the mother it was of no words it was unexpressible so that's the simple meaning of this whole thing going towards next slide kiksus take maternal body as a representation of all the female bodies and female body for female sexuality so she says that um, she says that a female body and a female joint sense which is a fe- female sexuality is unrepresentable in the phallocentric or patriarchal symbolic order i have repeated that previously as well so what does she how does she do that does that how does she do that so recall the segment first theory about female sexuality and recall female oedipus complex when girls make a lot of switches from her clitoris to vagina and second switch was from mother body to father body the original love the the first love of every baby whether it is boy and a girl is its mother's body but to end Uh, when a girl enter into a symbolic world into this cultural world the baby the, the girl has to love opposite gender for the reproduction for sure for heterosexual heterosexual reproduction so the baby the girl switches love from mother body to father body first switch and the second switch is what the when when baby when the girl when 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 she starts when when she stops masturbation and starts taking pleasure from her vagina so that's the that's double shifting so and sigmund freud also says that the the female ple- pleasure is passive while male pleasure is active calling the male pleasure active and female and and and, and calling female pressure uh, pa- pleasure inferior he says that it is passive and so that in order to become non normal and non incestuous reproductive heterosexual individual so i will tell you again and again you should watch these videos i am putting in the description box so that you can get all the idea which i am discussing in this that without that there will be no importance for this video i'm telling you again and again so um so lacan's theory says that the re- the adulthood means to enter so what is adulthood according to jacques lacan jacques, jacques lacan says adulthood means to enter into the symbolic order and taking up a position while freud's theory into this and then and now you add freud's theory into that Helen says Helen Kexo says she so she adds Lacan and Freud's theories so Helen Helen Kexo concludes that for a woman to become into the into the symbolic world which is the normal world means that she will be passive she will be vaginal she will be heterosexual and reproductive individual and that is totally against the nature of a woman and i will tell you that thing totally into into you know to, totally un- in understandable way, way when i will be covering lucy gray and that's why she promotes queer theory lesbian theory because heterosexuality is against the body of a woman being vaginal being only vaginal 
is against to the women body and her pleasure all right so if you follow freud you will know that it is biased being calling women passive and calling them inferior in their pleasure inferior this is a bias this is a total biasness sexuality of women is passive and male organ and sexuality is active how how so how can you just write that thing that simply that women are useless the women's passion is useless their 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 pleasure is useless and men's pleasure is um is is useful and it is superior this is a total understanding of women body from a male perspective all right so freud interrupts female sexuality under masculine standards female male pleasure is active but female pleasure is passive when and when and and a, and a female will get her pleasure completed when she is filled by penis in her vagina why so that's a complete bias so uh, moving towards next slide what does kicksus concludes then so she says that there is no female sexuality in salogocentric system first of all in patriarchal in the world based on patriarchal words and patriarchal rules there is no place for women sexuality a woman must have must build a world of its own all right because sexuality is phallocentric system is defined by keeping in view the masculine standard of sexuality where presence of penis is superior to the absence of penis in females women don't have penis it means and the six sigmund freud and lacan conclude that their pleasure is useless how why you you have one thing and other doesn't have that thing it doesn't mean that a person will stop living or, or the other person will will not take advantage of it, the of these things how the other person will find ways to take pleasure and the other person is not incomplete it's complete in its own way so there is no place for female pleasure without male penis in the patriarchal system so concluding it with the last slide and next video is coming on the next part is coming on the the love of the medusa so i will show the uh, the concerns of helene so last slide for this part helene takes us ask if a woman is forced away first from female body first from mother's body and then from her unique pleasure to bring her to a symbolic order all right first she has to switch from mother to uh, to male body then the girl with switch her pleasure organ from clitoris to vagina because she has to fit into this patriarchal system so it is possible for women to write so is it possible to for women to write and write and speak at all in this system if the words are made are according to the patriarchy then how a woman will use these words for her own benefit so there needs a new dictionary there needs a whole new civilization for women to use and express themselves and their bodies so it is possible for women to write and speak as a woman in the symbolic order where men males are favored over females so is it possible or not so i will tell you all these answers in the next part which is the love of the medusa and to end this part and a woman who writes or speaks does that or uh, uh, does that so from masculine position she use the words and ideas in this world which are based on males and it means that the symbolic order is characterized by males patriarchal or phallocentric system where the authority on everything is of male so male is authoritative figure on everything 
so how will women will be using these whole things so structure of language is fixed and stable so the all these things are stable and fixed and you know rigid in patriarchal system so each signifier has one signified and this all exclude female body you can also take an example like men has only one pleasure organ which is penis and women have more than one pleasure organ they have sclera their their this labia that's vagina i will tell you all this in in the next part which is you know uh, lucid degree so um so for this i will tell uh, i will conclude that part and i will be starting from the love of the medusa so until then thank you that thanks for all hey guys today's topic of the video is the second part of uh, helene kicks us videos and hurts about her series so uh, so this video is all about the the love of the medusa introductory part i have covered and it is a separate video as well but i will compile the whole uh, compile all the parts of helene kicks so and the love of medusa so that you can get all the package in one video so starting with the introduction of uh, love of medusa so all over history men are associated with great things and creative things so helene is concerning in the love of the medusa about the relationship of gender with the writing and creativity so this essay has two main aims first aim is to to break down and destroy and using derrida's theory to deconstruct the phallocentric symbolic order which lacan is talking about and which is based on order rationality narrow and patriarchy so the second aim of this essay is to foresee and predict or project or make some new strategies or to develop some new strategies for a new kind of relation between female bodies and female language so moving towards next slide so um this slide shows the so um, we have to uh, find out or revise lacan's theory uh for the background understanding right so the link will be also provided in description those who haven't seen my video on lacan so uh what lacan's means by the phallocentric um order so remember when he says that there are two doors one door mention ladies and the other door mention gentlemen and different and these and different signifiers but one signified it here is here so this play so these places men and women in different places in the symbolic world with reference to male penis or phallus because these laws are established by men in the world so now bring derrida's concept to the center of the center to lacan's idea and then say when he is so lacan idea when he says that men has penis so they are nearer to the center and center is equal to perfection so men have penis so they are they are near to center and perfection and completeness but when women lack penis and there is no chance for them to come to the center or perfection at all so therefore there is a complete lack in women that is not going to be filled so man enters his penis in women vagina to give her pleasure and complete her so for lacan in every case penis is a symbol of completion because penis is men makes them near to perfection and penis inserted in women during intercourse make them complete so this theory of lacan shows dominance of penis and overall men so but uh, but now feminists are going to challenge this point by lacan so i hope that you understand this all thing 
So moving towards next slide, which shows that women, if women are not near to the symbolic, so where are they going to be near to? So they are, uh, they are near to the imaginary realm or the imaginary stage. How? If women are away from the center of the symbolic order, then they are near to the imaginary realm. Because they are away from the center and near to the boundaries of the symbolic order and not bring Derrida's, uh, you know, theory and this concept as well, when Derrida says that things near to the center are tight and more rigid and are structured, <clears throat> but things away from the center make the center weak to put hold on them. And that's the reason these things starting moving apart and roam around more freely and are more independent. So post-structuralist feminists say that women are running away from the center. So they are less controlled by the central rule. So Lacan says that the, uh, you know, say that, that his theory is that, that, that the center and its rules are made by father and father is a male. So women are free from the rule of men and father. For example, take that example of theater when I have uh, in the first part of this video, which was introductory to uh, to the concerns of Helene uh, Kikso. When she said uh, when there was a and then there was an example of theater and the stage or the or the screen was was acting like a penis or a phallus, and those who were sitting near to the center were more tight and more responsible they could not easily move around all right because their movement will disturb the other people sitting behind so they are they are they are you know bound to uh, to be you know uh, to act according to the rules because they are near to the center and those who are and suppose women are those who are sitting behind very much far behind the screen so the center has lost its its grip on the on the seats uh, which are very uh, very far from the stage so so women who are sitting from the uh, away from the center in the last rows are free to do anything they want they they want they can go outside they eat popcorns and can choose things freely so they have more choices than the uh, people sitting near to the screen or stage so similar happens when women are in the imaginary realm they can imagine more and are not bound to the strict rule of the symbolic order so i hope that you understand that thing clearly so way towards an understanding of the imaginary and the symbolic realm in a short uh, understanding in a short state statements so the symbolic order is all about strict rules of patriarchy and the laws uh, and Lacan says that it is a rule of father to build a civilization or a state but the imaginary realm is all about imaginations with and choices and fantasies and freedom to imagine all right so women are away from the ideas of absolute fixed and stable meanings and then the women then men are so women are more free than men all right so uh, understanding another slide which is the which is about the flexibility with women language so applying the last slide here women are less less fixed in stable positions within the symbolic than men so women and their language are more fluid flowing flexible than men but it is it is worth noting that here that the that when uh, Kixos talks about women and woman sometimes she means that the terms li literally and de denoting the physical being with the vagina and breast and sometimes she uses the term to you know to the terms to donate the linguistic structural positions all right so women as a signifier in the chain of signifier 
within a symbolic just as men is say uh, just as men and chair and dog and computer for that matter so any signifier has a uh, stable meaning woman is the signifier connected to the signifier of vagina and breast etc because it is locked in place anchored by the cyst by the center of the system which limits place when kicks us says that women is more slippery more fluid more fixed and more playful than men she means both the literal meaning the person the signifier man she means both the literal woman the person and signifier woman so here um, here is where the line between biology and physiology and a subject position gets blurred again is kicks is arguing like freud that anatomy is destiny in language so moving towards the next slide i hope that you understand it was just just as a simple explanation you can skip that a little or understand that from re reversing the slide so um so moving towards next slide the laugh of the medusa has two levels at once it discusses the it it has a metaphorical and structural and the second level is the real and real people so uh, the metaphorical and real uh, uh, you know the the real meaning of this essay is about the woman must write herself and women must write women so on first level it means that women must write about themselves and tell their own stories but on the other level it means women as signifier must have their own ways to be connected to the signifier i and to write the signifier of selfhood and subjecthood offered within the symbolic order so that was a simple slide so moving towards next slide which is from writing on literal and metaphorical languages i will discuss that in this slide so so that this so let's discuss the the writing on literal and metaphorical levels so writing helen says that um writing is equal to masturbation and masturbation is something which uh, which which is thought for women as something they are doing something in secret or thought as something say, uh, silly or shame shameful or you know or something stereotypical and is not mature and it's abundant meant in order to use vagina for passive sexual pleasure and 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 to use the vagina to reproduce new kids and to grow normal according to a patriarchal order given by sigmund freud so sigmund freud says that women must not do masturbation or like they should use they should not use their clitoris they should use their vaginas to reproduce kids their pleasure is you know their pleasure is just uh, like a passive thing it is not necessary their first and foremost uh, target is to reproduce and to and to be fit into the society or societal norms or to be normal all right so uh, if men write with penis then women must have to discover their own sexual pleasure where it is located so they should find out the answer that where is their sexual pleasure located then so moving towards next slide which says that male too are the prisoners of the symbolic order i like this thing about feminism that is not just focused on women feminism mean equality and it is coming to discuss and deconstruct what is so in so prisoning or something which is so rigid so it is also uh, you know uh, rising feminism also about rising problems of about men and they say that men are uh, men men just as just like women and other genders is is you know is, is imprisoned in the symbolic order and i will tell you how so men has not yet as well discovered their sexuality and their own talent of writing because all the time they were writing with their penis so writing with penis means the rule of language established by their fathers 
and some patriarchal authority for them. So Halil uh, says that men should write about men or their manhood. So men should write about men and their own bodies. Men, men word uh, here means the signifier within the symbolic order which has no privilege over women as signifier. So men sexuality is like women's and it is to define in terms of binary opposition such as active sexuality slash passive sexuality or masculine slash feminine and heterosexual relation are sensed as something other and fear is related by you know by these bond binaries so fear is in terms of slashing uh, you know in terms of slashing each situation by dividing it into superior and inferior so uh, Halil also says that men will be the prisoner of the symbolic order which separates them from their bodies just like how women are separated from their own bodies and their sexualities are limited and defined in the life limited in the in the you know in 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 limited and limiting terms so what are these limiting terms these are the binary pairs so the limiting terms are called the binary pairs and the limitation of everything in the slash in these binaries so they are just they have just limited the diversity in just two things one on the right, right side of the slash and one on the left side of the slash and left side is superior to the right side so so there there could be more than so feminists are all about and deconstruction is all about that there are more than two realities or there are more than two possibilities and which needs and the slashing the two things is just limiting the the, the knowledge of possibilities so uh, which needs to find out by deconstruction these two possibilities only so in can in the next slide i will summarize what i have told you earlier so keeping in the keeping uh, in mind the last slides so what Helene does she first lands men being patriarchal oppressors okay so she is not about like uh, men are op or you know uh, they are or uh, they are of uh, they you know they are um, something like very uh, oppressors or something like that they are also oppressed so and they are also patriarchal oppressors so and second is that she identifies all she identifies the structure their reinforcement gender dichotomies as being oppressive to both sexes so first is that she is telling that men's rule is acting as something oppress oppressor so they are oppressors they are oppressing the people who are other than them and the second is that she is also called the men and the second point is all about that she is saying that men are also the prisoners of the symbolic realm or the symbolic order so that's what all she says so uh, la last part of this uh, you know first half of the laugh of the medusa helene uh, links that she says that how do binary structures seep into cultures it is also harmful for cultures it is also harmful for other people as well you know it is not harmful only for men and women it is harmful for everyone the binaries are harmful for everyone how so Halil links such oppressive binary structures or binary opposition to other Western cultural practices just like racial discrimination and Sigmund Freud calling women the dark continent right so uh, Halim uses references to apartheid to demonstrate that these binary system structure genders and also imperialism and women are associated with darkness and otherness or they and, and with Africa so men so women are associated with darkness and Africa and something like that 
and men are associated with lightness selfhood and goodness and western civilization and white white things all right so in essay helene refers to women or any other individual who is treated who is thought to be inferior so she is uh, you know referring to all women and all other identities that are being oppressed as they so they are she is calling all of them as they as a non speaker and non writers but as soon as they start speaking and writing and learn their names given by the symbolic order or the or given by the names given by some authority to them so they learn that their territory is black and dark and other so they are always so their education is as well not enlightening them but enlightening them to know that they are inferior or they are other or they are dark so that was all about the first half of the law for medusa and the second part will be about is will be starting from uh, exterior uh, famine nine and i hope that i am pronouncing this name um, you know per per perfectly or not but the second part of this video will be starting from that thank you so guys uh, this is the third part and the last part of helene kicks love of the love of the medusa so i have covered a whole understanding of uh, what post structuralism is about or what is the pre post structuralism all about and then i have covered uh, the a video showing the concerns of uh, you know uh, helene kixo or helene sixo so um, and and after that i published the first half of the love of the medusa and its analysis and themes and this is the last part of on helene sixo so and the love of the medusa so starting with uh, the important uh, you know term coined by helene sixo and the term is acrichore feminine acrichore feminine i will tell you all about that term as well so helene sixo says that most women write and speak and use language from masculine position because to speak a woman need a stable system of meanings and thus she adopts the phallus or patriarchal system of language so there is little or no feminine in in men's writing in women's writing if they use the language made in the system of the male because in the symbolic order everything is divided in the symbolic order based on you know fellow gocentric system everything is divided into binary pairs where one thing is superior to the other and other thing is inferior so males are inferior to women you know the male slash female white slash black that binaries so when it comes to masculine and feminine uh, slash feminine the feminine is repressed one and unfortunately women has the only chance to write in it how now um, that solution that solution does uh, so what solution does uh, you know so what kind of solution that helene uh, sexo provides here she coins a term ecritore feminine which is uh, defined as feminine style of writing which is not like that of masculine phallocentric one so uh, in the next slide which is uh, what is that ecritore is ec so ecritore feminine is possible in poetry because novels the novels are you know uh, they are the they are filled with they are the allies of you know representationalism and uh, realism so um, so it represents stable language and where one signifier has only one signified and there are strict meaning of every word but in poetry as we have discussed earlier 
in 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 Derrida's Notion Center of Notion and and the videos um, on you know um, Helene Sixo and post-structuralism. It says that poetry that the language of poetry is free it is in metaphorical languages it is in metaphorical language and metaphorical language and poetic language has more than one meaning so so the chains of signifiers are free and free floating in poetry and there are their meanings are less stable and there are multiple meanings of every word so moving towards the third slide what is an other plus point of poetry which is the suppressed or repressed desires <clears throat> so i will tell you that as uh, says that poetry is closer to the unconscious and lacan says that the unconscious is structured like chains of signifier which never rest nor attach to any signified so poetry being closer to the unconscious is according to sigmund freud is closer to the repressed desires because in the unconscious we have repressed desires all the desire which we which which, which we don't repress which which we don't express so we take them into the unconscious so the unconscious is the resting place of the you know uh, repressed desires and for sixo the female body and female sexuality has been repressed since ages so poetry tell us all about the repressed desires so but sixo says that poetry is a form of a creature feminine but all poets she cites as feminine writers are men so going towards next slide which is that uh, like which is the feminine you know feminine uh, the which is the feminine writing as a rupture how does the feminine you know their writings the creature feminine if you have watched my video on derrida's notion of center and deconstruction remember that i mentioned there that words such as rupture and break etc so these words mean a kind of rupture within a system or a kind of break in a system which deconstructs the previous system and concludes that 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 previous system was not an absolute system but a construct by society or a school of thought and in the case of for example helene sixo's feminine writing serve as a as a rupture or a break it means that the feminine writing deconstruct and you know a question or breaks down the patriarchal system of writing because patriarchy and writings under the system is a construct or a system built by past societies and is not an absolute system of writing because there exist many more other system as well and i hope that uh, you know it is clear to you now what i meant by the construct and rupture etc so let me explain further if you have not clear that point yet so um so sixus says that the rupture is same as derrida's concept of it like derrida's concept of deconstruction or rupture so rupture is a place or point where the totality of a system breaks down and we can see it as a system or a, or a construct rather than simply as an absolute truth for example let me explain with another example so since ages people thought that religion is an absolute truth or something like that uh, or like it is something that uh, could provide them solution for everything but after philosophies of david hume voltaire and you know uh, the existential phil philosophies of of you know uh, of kekegard and nietzsche and and schopenhauer and etc and 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 the theory of darwin and you know the discovery of several other things like the discovery of the dead bodies of you know the skeletons of and the fossils of dinosaurs which says that uh, the world is not made in 6 days and which negates the you know 
the idea of bible that the world is made in six days or seven days or something like that so so people start thinking that religion was a system constructed by someone's mind and can't prove provide absolute or permanent answers so sixos critique on phallocentric system is symbolic order suggest that the in symbolic order suggest that you know uh, the phallocentric structure is also constructed and is not something inevitable essential or unchangeable or absolute and the feminine writing are going to deconstruct it so feminine writing and gay lesbian writings are going to deconstruct it but let us understand that how is uh, how is equatory feminine a transformative or something that deconstruct it works on two level according to helene sixo first is when individual woman write herself in this way she discovers for herself that what her body feels like and how to write about body in language in this way a woman found find out her own sexuality which is her own body and this also helps her finding ways to write about her pleasure or joyousness joyousness is a french word i have told you in early part of the the love of the medusa whereas the second level is when women speak or write their own bodies the structure of language itself will be changed as women will become active bodies and not just a passive thing all the time and this will change their position as a subject so this happens when a woman who write will be creating a new signifying system which allow more play or multiple meaning more fluidity than the existing single phallocentric you know patriarchal symbolic order so keeping these both levels in mind look at poetry each word in poetry means different different meanings you know and there is multiplicity of meanings and is more fluidity than rigidity that is in uh, that then you know that the more fluidity and more you know the uh, poetry language is more fluid and whereas the prose language is more rigid so so this all subvert clarity and rationality which derrida calls logocentrism so uh, so uh, feminine language or ecritor feminine uh, provides irrationality prefers irrationality and chaos over rationality and order and it is a whole new dimension to the world to understand the world western thought has till now uh, found the world interpreted the world only through you know rational dimension what if we start perceiving it in terms of irrationality so uh, next slide which says that uh, you know that uh, that males writing that uh, which has that ecritory feminine bring us closer to the real and the real of the lacan of lacan so male writings are near to the symbolic order which is totally opposite to a lacan idea of real that ecritory but ecritory feminine bring us closer to the real for the understanding of the real you must watch the my video on you know lacan's idea of the real and the link is in the description below so a woman who speaks does not produce stability which is required in the symbolic order so this stability or rigidity of meaning is also characterized as linearity and objectivity there is something wrong with the you know phallocentric symbolic system that it rejects subjectivity and the more human expression in human beings and ecritory feminine is going to add subjectivity to this as well because ecritory feminine deconstruct the phallocentric or objective language phallocentric system creates binaries and superiority and inferiority such as the white and black slash white slash black etc so fem ecritory feminine 
which deconstructs uh, when deconstructing the phylogocentric system erase all these division and binaries and bring or an individual closer to the women to to the closer to the real which is the main man mother's body and breast and satisfaction and the union with the maternal where there was no lack or no separation so how will you distinguish ecrotare feminine or feminine writing from other writings so to distinguish ecrotare fe fe feminine or feminine writing so how do we distinguish i am talking again and sorry for the disruption of sound here and there because there are some technical issues and with me in that time when i was recording so coming back to our topic to distinguish how do we distinguish the the feminine writings or ecritore feminine from those of the other so to distinguish ecritore feminine or feminine writings from other type of writing sixu associate feminine writing with the non existing linguistic modes because ecritore feminine or feminine writings are something that are expressed beyond language so they are not existing they are existing non linguistic modes so explaining it further writing here in the second point ecritore feminine is milk a song a rhythm a pulse but no words it is something connected with bodies and with beats and with movement of bodies but not something like representational language that of the phylogocentric symbolic order so way towards next slide which is ecritore feminine is con con conceived by the marginals or the outlaws peoples or the people who are not thought to be normal like bisexual homosexual lesbian gays and women on some point as well so ecritore feminine promotes being like being slippery or being fluid and one cannot define the practice of ecritore feminine all right so there is no definition to it because to define is to limit to pin something down or to make something fixed or to make it stable or a or make it a stable or rigid system or structure is to define or limit the boundaries of that thing all right <clears throat> sixu says in third point that ecritore ecritore uh, feminine is fluid for all this because it resists or escapes any definition and can't be theorized encoded or understood but it does not mean that it does not exist something you you can perceive or something that you can touch or see or speak or you know you know you, you use doesn't mean that that doesn't make the other thing which we you don't see or don't use it doesn't mean that the other thing doesn't exist it exists on some other level all right <clears throat> so ecritore feminine will always be greater than existing sim system of classification you know the system of classification that was given by aristotle in the first or second video which i uh, of this series when i started on this book so um, and the knowledge in the phylogocentric western culture so aristotle have also some misogynistic thoughts and i shall cover them as well that how um, he has something very negative to say about women so moving towards the fifth point which is a ecritore feminine can't be defined but can be conceived of by subject not subjugated to a central authority so those who can use uh, you know ecritore feminine or feminine writing are not limited to just one authority they they don't obey any authority any order does not discipline them or does not rule them they are you know limitless they are multiple they have they have boundaryless boundaryless existence and expression all right so in this last sixth point 
because ekratore feminine can't be conceived by those using feminine language and such language user will be on the margin or and or they can be women and outlaws or bisexuals or those who are resistant are are resisted or distanced from the center of phylogocentric symbolic order so i hope that you understand that because that these six points are very evident in the whole lecture series that i am starting from helene sixo delida and you know sigmund freud and lacan you just need to watch these things so the next slide is all about so this slide is all about the dramatic under the, the diagrammatic understanding of the previous slide all right so there is a center which is the phallus and penis in center and that center keeps things in order you should watch my video on derrida all right so derrida notion of center so the things that are away from the center are chaotic because the center does not influence them all right so the first ring around the center is nearer to the center <clears throat> so they are men all right they are men because they have penis and the center is can is made up of penis it's because it is a patriarchal world so those who have penis are near to the center and uh, and those who are you know those those are away from the so the, those who don't have penis are away from the center and they are more you know chaotic um <clears throat> away from order they are very disordered and multiple meaning world they create all right um, the, the the world of colors all right so what is bisexuality and how bisexuality promotes and deconstruct the phylogocentric order so who are in the position of fault laws bisexuals helen sexo says sexo starts by mentioning that freud who says that all human are fundamentally bisexuals and the audible tri trajectory which steers which move both boys and girls into heterosexuality is an un unfortunate you know a requirement of culture so sexo says that culture is always phylogocentric order because entry into the symbolic realm requires a a division between masculine and feminine and feminine is always thought to be inferior is repressed and is subordinated by using slash between masculine and feminine sixo wants a new bisexuality she uses words the other bisexuality which is the other bisexuality means the refusal to exclude either of the difference of one sex or the refusal of the self slash other division to dissolve all distinctions or all differences or all binaries and that's the notion of bisexuality by sexo no distinction of sexes so that sexuality would be from any body and and any part at any time that's um, so that's more like Sigmund Freud's concept of polymorphous perversity that all infants have uh, you know have which are organized and disciplined for society are to uh, you know that society is made by the phylogocentric system so um the bisexuality which Sigmund Freud think is the polymorphously perverse people and they are not normal they are abnormal but feminist theorist like helen sexo says that they are not abnormal they are different from you because you have divided thing into good and bad it doesn't mean that these people are bad because your mind has categorized them it doesn't mean that the bisexual and women and other marginal people are bad we are not responsible for what your mind think they all these binaries all these cultures all these divisions are made by your own mind all right so that was the chunk of this you know uh, slide crux of that slide sorry so the love of the medusa the the myth of the medusa which she did discusses in this uh, essay at the last 
if the binary pair of the self and other is removed all other such pair will fall apart and six to says that other bisexuality will be a deconstructive force to erase clashes in all binaries with this representation of female sexuality in western culture and myth associated with womanhood will fall apart and you should watch my video on levi strauss so sixus focuses on myth of women as black hole or abyss or something very chaotic or a dark continent and the myth of medusa a woman a medusa was a woman with a uh, snakes for hair and her look turned men into stone so idea of women as a dark continent and the women who like penis uh, is thought to be something negative and they have a scary hole and they thought that women have a scary hole uh, where their penis has disappeared and might never come back so fred you uses medusa's myth as part of the fear of castration like a woman whose hair is moving with the, a lot of penises and she is scary not because she has no penis but because she has too many penises and that's not normal for the patriarchal system and this is a kind of fear of being deceitful in men which make them to uphold the feloco centric order because men are afraid of losing penis or having too many penises i hope that you understand that slide because everything is crystal clear in that so i don't have to explain so moving towards next slide which is sex sex like sex and tax all right so <clears throat> no um nowhere in all myths there is no description of women body in itself without the mention of penis why you associate women with not having penis there are there is a whole body of women you should talk about that as well but why are you uh, you know talking about women sexual organ and all the time so kixus sixu says that women must write about their own bodies and sexuality to tell men that they are not about penises or at all she says we have to show them our sex as a new word sex is a new word that is a combination of sex and tax and the which is the idea that female sexuality as a new form of writing all right next slide is the sexus about female hysteria and you should watch my video on segment fight for that so basic idea of female hysteria was given by segment fight who who says that you know um the shifting of women first love um, a girl's first love is so a girl and boy's first love is their mother but women has to change the gender women uh, a girl has to love a male all right and second is that the original uh, you know segment fight says that the basic uh, sexual organ is clitoris or penis but as as you know all clitoris for women the masturbation of clitoris is thought to be something you know uh, uh, you know yeah, like sinful or shameful or or taboo thing kind of thing so women have to change their sex organ which was vagina so that double shifting first the shift of gender and the second the shift of sex organ created to take took too much energy and the depression the depression of these desires so desire for clitoris stimulation and desire for love of mother that was repressed in her unconscious and that took a lot of energy and in some tense of time when that energy and and that energy bring hysteria in women so that was point of view of sigmund freud i have discussed that clearly in that video i will pin that uh, link in the description so for freud hysteria is the symptom of repressed ideas and the body speaks with the what the unconscious mind can't say and the and the and the unconscious thoughts are written out by the body itself but sexual idea of 
a clitoris seminal is similar to hysteria like the direct connection between the unconscious and the bodies as a no as a mode of writing so uh, you have to watch the symptoms of hysteria that uh, hysteria is all about the are uh, all about the about being too much loud by their bodies and you know and they are uh, that's what his six years said that they are expressing the repressed ideas to their from their bodies so the love of the moment is a conclusion what's his conclusion it's a critique on Freudian nuclear system that where mother father baby a uh, formation and and this genetic idea of castration and the lake that's the basic idea of the feminine in both Freud and Lacan analysis Sixus want to break this old circuit so that the family formation which upholds the phallocentric uh, symbolic want be recreated every time a child is born so Sixus says first Sixus says that family system is oppressive there should be no family system and it is a limiting for both men and women Female bodies, pregnancies needs to be written in a lecture feminine, and this will represent birth as something other than a separation and lake. So that's the conclusion of sexus. You can re read that, and you can do whatever because it's so much into that. So I hope that you understand my lecture, and sorry for too much noise in here. Thank you. You can also subscribe to this channel. You can share. like and comment for further inquiry thank you